Good evening, everybody. I hope you're well. I hope you're safe. Thank you for joining me. Another cooking class we're going to smash out tonight. And what we're smashing, well, what we're cooking, hopefully not doing too much smashing, is we're going to be creating a beef nacho style, you know, gorgeous, lovely, almost sauce-like, but not really, like a stew, but a beef stew. And we're going to be um, serving that alongside the crunchiest chips you've possibly ever tasted in your life. And of course, everything is gluten-free, sugar-free, dairy-free, and grain-free tonight as well, which is exciting. So if you're joining me live here, here on Facebook, please stop in and say hi. Let me know where you're joining me from. If you are watching this recorded just and you're on YouTube, just to let you know that this video is a complete cooking class, so there's no editing done, just in case you're wondering why I talk a lot. It's because it's a cooking class as opposed to a how to cook video. But you're still gonna learn to cook as well, which is very exciting because tonight's an exciting class. And I do so love the flavors that we're gonna be incorporating in tonight's dish. So tonight, it's a bit of a busy night. We've got a, we've got a lot happening. Because in essence, I'm gonna be creating three recipes. Um, so they all work in combination with each other, or you can use them isolated as well. Like you could just make the nacho beef and that would be phenomenal. Or you could just make the crispy chips and that would be phenomenal as well. And the other part that I'm using tonight is I'm gonna make just a really, really quick salsa for you guys as well. So three recipes tonight, we should get into it. But before we do, I'd like to say hello. I'm gonna say hello to Janelle. We've got Charlene joining us all the way from New Zealand and in, in, in the Tron, good to see you Charlene. Hello to Linda and of course to Wendy who has got her pen and paper ready. You're smart, Wendy, because you know this is the first time I've ever shared this dish. It's a brand new recipe, so you are on the right track. Also, hello to Emma as well. Thank you for joining us. Charlene's giving me a bit of a laugh because we're talking about H-Towner. Oh, yes, H-Town. Uh, good to have you joining us. Wherever you're joining us from in the world, you are most welcome to be joining me here in the kitchen. And it's exciting because, as I was saying, three recipes. Let's get into it. The first recipe we're going to do is we're going to start with the chips. So we're kind of going to work backwards a little bit. But chips are a good place to start because chips are good. <laughs> and I've got a bit of an addiction to chips, especially these ones. And these ones are so incredibly good for me, so it's a good thing. So the first thing we're going to start with is the um, well, flour, even though if you can call it that, because it's flax meal or linseed meal, brown flax seeds that I'm using here. And in my bowl here, I actually, I actually ground these myself from flax seeds. And the difference is, it's so different from actually buying pre-made uh, flax seed powder or pre-ground. This stuff has so much more richness to it. It's more nuttier. Um, and it's really, it's a lot lighter. Not as dense as your normal ground flax seeds. So I, I milled mine just in my little, my little pepper grinder slash coffee grinder slash spice grinder. And I've got this wonderful, you know, flour. So you want 90 grams of that in there. And this will make enough, I say two serves of chips <laughs> as a big snack, but it's probably more like three or four if you're being mysy. <laughs> but if you're like, oh, these are mine, it's two portions. So 90 grams in there, that's a lot of fiber. Yeah, that's a lot of fiber for a start. So once you've got that in there, we're just gonna add in a pinch, and I'm just using a good quality mineral salt is going in there as well. A bit of a pinch of that. One more little pinch. I'm gonna be adding in just a bit of baking soda, not too much. And again, I'm going for a pinch because I wanna make sure the baking soda or that bicarb soda has not um, got any lumps, which is not very nice. And by the way, apologies, 90 grams is three ounces, just in case you're wondering. So we've got those two in there. I'm also gonna add a little bit of um, prebiotic quality. And by that, I mean I'm gonna be adding in some of our pure as inulin. The reason I'm using inulin um, today is because I like it. <laughs> no, jokes. Well, I do, I actually really like it. Uh, it's more so that as you guys who are, who are familiar with BHK recipes know that inulin is a prebiotic dietary fiber. So it is adding even more fiber to our gorgeous uh, crackers here, or chips here. But it's also um, being a dietary fiber, being probiotic or prebiotic, it feeds our healthy gut bacteria. So I'm adding in a tablespoon of our pure as inulin. And because it's got a sweetness to it, it's gonna to help to balance out the flavors as well. So that is going in there. Give it a little bit of a twist. Nothing stopping you from adding a little bit of black pepper to that as well. A good grinding of black pepper. 
Uh, that's pretty much all the dry ingredients in this cracker recipe. We just need to add a bit of liquid. And the liquid that I'm adding today, I've got this absolutely stunning extra virgin olive oil that was given to me, it come all the way from Greece. It's called the Gavna, and it is a premium extra virgin olive oil. And I'll be using one tablespoon of this amazing extra virgin olive oil. It's so good. It is really, really delicious. So I'm using a bit of that. I'm also going to be adding in some egg. I'm going to be using one whole egg, cracking that in. And I just want to add in one white as well. So I'm going to keep my yolk in this little jar that I have here for use at another time. So we're just going to very carefully separate our egg white from our egg yolk. And that can be saved for later for something delicious. That goes there. Back to my spoon. I'm going to give things just a little bit of a mix here just to see what's happening in my bowl. It needs other stuff. <laughs> it's a bit thick. So we're going to thin this down. Thin this down with a little bit of kombu water. Now depending, and you guys know this is the stock we make from dry kelp, right? This is the good high iron, high iodine, nutrient dense stock that we use here in BHK. And it's just one of my staples. So anytime I have a recipe that would call for water, a savory recipe, because remember it tastes like the ocean, um, I add this uh, seaweed stock or kombu water. So we're going to be adding them depending on how thirsty your flax seeds are. My flax seeds, because I've ground them from scratch, I actually find them to be a lot thirstier than if I was using the pre-ground ones, and I think that's because they're, they're a lot drier, whereas this one is just waiting to take on liquid. So you're going to be adding sort of anything from 5 to 10 tablespoons of water. So this is where you kind of got to pay a bit of attention. And what you're looking for, I'll start off with that. That was about three tablespoons. Because <laughs> I'm looking for a texture. That's what I'm after. I don't want it to be too thick and I don't want it to be too runny because we're going to be spreading this out to make our chips. So if it's too runny, I'll show you. We're going to, we're going to find the perfect texture to get it. If it's too runny, um, then you get like really uh, fragile chips. And if it's too thick, you get really thick and soft, chewy chips. And you don't want that. You want that lovely mix in between. So what I've got here now is still a little bit on the thick side. Do you see how it's clumping off my spoon? That's still a little bit thick. I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm just adding like literally a tablespoon at a time until I begin to reach that consistency that I'm happy with. See, it's starting to, 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 to be a little bit looser, we call it. It's never a pleasant thing to refer to food as being loose. <laughs> it always kind of makes me a bit concerned. I don't like saying it. So it's, but it is. How else are you to describe that? That's getting to be quite loose. <laughs> we, won't, we won't talk about loose things to do with clumpy food anymore. But yes, keep adding. Keep on testing until you get. We're so close now. And you'll be able to see. The way that it does drop off the spoon, kind of what I'm after. See, it drops off quite quickly. I reckon just one more tablespoon. Like I said, I reckon because it was fresh flax seeds that I ground down, that's why it's taking so much liquid on board. You probably won't be using pre-ground. You won't need as much, nearly as much liquid as I have. So I'm, I'm a lot more happy with that now. So we can go on to stage two. So stage two is literally the rolling process. And did I bring my tray with me? <laughs> wonder if my hand will be... Oh, I did! I did, I was hiding it. Here it is. I knew I bought it. Right, I've got a tray here, our baking sheet. I've just put a bit of silicone, a silicone mat onto it. You could, um, alternatively, you could use a piece of baking paper as well. Both work absolutely fine. And you want to set your oven on 150 degrees Celsius, which is about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's quite a low temperature for these particular chips. And the reason why the temperature is low is, remember, we want to get a really crunchy chip out of, that, out of this recipe. And the way that we do that is that we make sure we take as much moisture out of these chips as possible. So one of the ways that we take moisture out is during this initial cook stage. And so we set the oven, I'm just using this little spatula to make it flat. We set the oven on quite low, so it doesn't really bake it, it more dries it out. And you can kind of see how awesome 
It's, this is actually um, for making bread. This is what bakers use uh, to divide bread. It's, it's a great little tool, but look how good it is just for spreading this cracker or chip mixture super evenly, which of course is really, really important that it's nice and even. But more so than that, we are able to, you know, get it right to the edges, nice and easy. Because I used to do this with a spoon and it was really difficult. <laughs> this is so much better, I love this. So you wanna get it as flat as possible. You know, I'm using a decent sized baking sheet and I'm moving right to the edges with the mixture and with my little scraper there. And we've got a pretty evenly flattened dough or mixture there, which is, which is exactly what we want. So once you're at this stage, and you could literally stand here and play with it all day, uh, because I like doing stuff like that. I'm like, I've got to get the edges perfectly straight. You know, I feel like you know, maybe I'm doing plaster. If you've ever done plaster, this, is, this must be a, a very similar cooking technique. All right, so it's looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. So we pop off to that oven, remember, 150 degrees Celsius or 300 degrees Fahrenheit, and you want to leave it in there for 12 to 15 minutes until it literally will dry out in one piece. Now you don't want to get any color on it at this stage. You just, that's why it's got a low oven, it's just drying it out. So that goes off to the oven. And then what we are left with, at the end of it all, is we are left with this. So um, you can see how light and golden, that's from the fresh flax seed, isn't it just amazing? We're left with that 15 minutes later, or I think it was about 14 in my oven. It took for me to have this, but you can see we've got no color on either side. Look how easily it just peels off the paper there. We've got no color on either side. It's just literally dried out. This is perfect. So you just kind of dump it onto your board. And all you want to do now is you want to create chips. <laughs> You know, and whatever size chips that you decide you want to make, like whatever style, whether you want to go with triangles or you want to go with fancy squares, whether you want to go completely, you know, no, no particular shape in mind and just cut, I would find quite good as well. So you just cut them up into what would be your normal size corn chips, because that's pretty much what we're, we're aiming for here, is a bit of a corn chip. So you're just cutting it up like that, and don't be too concerned about the size of them too much because as long as the mixture was evenly flattened on, flattened on your tray you're going to get the same type of crispiness once it's all done so that's all you're doing pretty easy right these then go like i usually do probably half at a time because that's the size of my air fryer is these then go into the basket of your air fryer you give it a quick little spray with a little extra virgin olive oil, maybe a light little spray of sprinkle of salt, and then you bake them in your air fryer, ideally your air fryer. And I'm not gonna apologize for this because this is what gets them crispy. You bake them in your air fryer on hot 200 degrees for eight to 10 minutes. And I'll show you the end result. So I'm not throwing these away, I'm making chips later. <laughs> There's gonna be so many chips in this house, it's gonna be great. All right. This is the end result. So can you see and can you hear? You get chips, you get crunchy chips. You don't just get the soft, saggy looking crackery thing, you get crunchy chips. So once they come out of that air fryer, you want them to look like that. You want them to sound like chips. They've got to crunch, right? So if yours are not crunchy, leave them in for a little bit longer. And I say like, I'll do half at a time in my air fryer because I've got about a seven litre air fryer. And if you're like, but I don't have an air fryer bridge, what am I gonna do? Um, you can make them in the oven, but I can't promise that you're gonna get them as crunchy as mine. Because an air fryer is designed to make things crispy without the use of deep frying. That's the whole idea behind an air fryer. It's completely different from an oven. So if you're doing it in the oven, making them crispy, you probably wanna hit for about 230 uh, degrees, Celsius, uh, degrees Celsius, which is about 450 Fahrenheit, and you potentially want to leave them in there for again 8 to 15 minutes, depending on your oven. Yeah, but you could probably do them all at the same time, but you're after crunchy. It will happen in the oven, the air fryer just seems to have this innate ability just to make everything delicious. I love air fryers. So that is your chips done. We can now set those aside, because the next stage of our recipe is preparing the beef 
the beef nachos. And again, this is so simple. In fact, you could make the nachos while the chips are doing their first cook in that, in that hot or medium temperature oven at 150. So you could make the beef while the nacho chippy things are cooking. So come over here, just a little bit. Yeah, turn that way just a little bit. So I'm, I'm using my big wok here. Um, just so I can get everything in and I'm giving you enough of the nacho beef for two portions um, Yes, it is. I'm just checking it is definitely two portions So we're going to start with a little bit of flavor down on the base of our wok and in the way of flavor Of course, I'm talking about sticky sauce So we're going to be putting in a tablespoon of sticky sauce it goes into the base of our frying pan and I'm doing this all on about medium to high temperature as well. So once that's gone in, where is our next one? We are also going to grab up at the same time, I've got some chopped onion. It's about a medium sized onion that I've diced up. In fact, I did it in my food processor so I wouldn't have to stand there and chop, which is really, really clever. So that is gonna go in right now. We've got that diced onion going in. Next in line is I've got some finely chopped Freshly chopped garlic, did that one today too. We're gonna to be putting in a tablespoon of garlic. What happened? <laughs> what happened there? Work, it's working now. Um, that's a lot of garlic. So if you do decide to follow my recipe, you may wanna face the wall tonight when you sleep. <laughs> if you sleep with someone, face away, face the head, no kissing. Cause I do like a bit of garlic. So no kissing tonight happening folks. That's a lot of garlic in there. Alright, give that a bit of a stir, get it all moving, get it all happening. Nothing much is happening now because I forgot to turn the cooktop on. <laughs> but that's alright. Okay, our next ingredient is some spice. Can't be a Bridget dish without spice, right? I know, I love spice. Um, I promise this one isn't too spicy. Hand on heart, not a spicy one. Unless you want it to be. <laughs> I've got some smoked paprika and I've just looked at it. I, I picked up the hot paprika. You could just have a normal smoked paprika. You don't have to have this crazy hot one like I've got. Um, so if you're just using normal smoked paprika into the pan here, even while the onions are caramelizing and starting to saute with the garlic, you can start to add in the spices so the spices can get a little bit hot. So I'm going to be adding in two tablespoons, teaspoons, <laughs> it's been a long day, two teaspoons of smoked paprika is going in there right now. I've got some cumin powder here too, freshly ground, I was grinding everything today in the kitchen, I was enjoying my spice grind I was, and so I took some cumin seeds and I ground them down, and again, the flavour of this is so different to the stuff you already buy pre-ground. So I would normally add two teaspoons, you might want to, I'm going to add one because it's really quite strong and stuff. And we're just going to give it a bit of a stir and already I'm getting this amazing aroma just hitting me in the face. And it's just some onions and garlic and a little bit of spice. Oh, I'm good, thank you. And a little bit of spice is all we kind of need, right? Mahi's trying to give me a teaspoon. He's recognised that I'm a bit short on teaspoons. But this, you know, this initial stage of cooking is really important. Like, don't underestimate the time that you spend sauteing the onions and garlic. Because what is actually happening is like onions, even though, well, it's pretty obvious actually. When you cut an onion, you cry. There's all the moisture in onions. Well, you don't always cry, but I know I do. And that's because of all the moisture in onions. So what's actually happening now, the sauteing action is beginning to evaporate some of that moisture. And as the moisture evaporates, the flavor of the onion intensifies. And we actually get quite the sweet like nuances coming out of the onion when we do this. So, you know, don't, don't um, just sort of gloss past this step because it is actually a really cool step to do because you're, you're adding so much flavor just by the simple action of a little tiny saute along the way, which is really cool. Right. So the next ingredient that we're going to be going for is our beef. Here is our beef. Now you don't have to use beef. You could use chicken, ground chicken, you could use turkey, you could use lamb as well. You could dice up some prawns and make a seafood version if you really wanted to. Um, so it's completely up to you what type of protein that you use. Now you need 250 grams, which is 8.8 .8 ounces of protein. Remember that's for two people, for two portions. 
So now that my onions and my glasses are starting to steam up, now that my onions are really beginning to get take on a bit of colour and the smells intensifying, it's time to add the mince into here. So I'm using a lean beef mince because the last thing that you want when you cook this is to have an oil slick from you know a, 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 a mince that might have a higher fat content and that tends to be the cheaper ones they just add more and more fat basically and the lean ones have more and more meat so you know buy the best that your budget can allow I mean mince is still a pretty decent price anyway but just remember that leaner the mince the less fat content it has we still want a little bit of fat in our meat we don't want to be completely devoid of fat because fat equals flavour and fat is really good for us, good quality fat that is. You want to have a little bit in your diet, but you don't want to have too much. There's a nice balance that we're creating here with the lean mince. So that's looking good. I'm going to add a little bit of salt now. That's going to help that mince to start to cook a little bit faster and break the onion down a little bit. Bit of a sprinkle goes in there. And if you want to, <laughs> I just found this. If you want to add some chili, feel free to do so. I'm going to add just a little. I'm not going to add much. I'm just going to add a couple of pieces, like maybe half. It's a bird's eye chili, so it's quite a hot one. Because I've already got that nice smoky paprika in here. So I don't want to add too much. So that is now going to go on and in. Just a little scrape down off the knife. Do not touch your eyes now. I just thought of that. I was like, oh, she's going to rub her eyes at some point. And then there's going to be mascara everywhere. It's going to be a mascara massacre. What <laughs> she does that. Alright, it's looking good. It's looking delicious. It's looking wonderful. Let's now add a few more vegetables in the way of, of course, adding more fibre to this. Because it wouldn't be a Bridget's Healthy Kitchen recipe if I wasn't trying to get as much fibre into you guys as possible because fibre is so good for us. So the fibre I'm adding today, I've just chopped up one medium sized red capsicum and small dice as you can see, that's going in. And you can add any vegetables here. You could do mushrooms, you could do asparagus, you could do zucchini, you could do celery, which I'm doing, that was one scoop of celery. You could do fennel, you could do kohlrabi, you could do, what else have we got? You could do a little bit of swede, very small dice. You could even add broccoli or cauliflower if you want to. The choice is yours, but I'm really going for obviously colour and flavour when it comes to the, my two choices of um, extra bits of vegetables that is going in there. And the last thing that we're going to add, I think it's the last thing, yeah, it looks like the last thing, is this. So this is my fabulous jar, my fabulous jar of, uh, I call it cheap tomato sauce. So it's uh, my own tomato sauce that I make that has no sugar, no gluten, no dairy, no nasties. Um, but if you want to, you could just add a pre-bought tomato sauce. Just make sure there's no sugar, because a lot of them have sugar and gluten. Be very aware. Or you might just want to buy a can of tomatoes, like your whole Italian tomatoes. Blend them up and then throw them in. So what we're going to need for this, but of course mine has spices and different flavours and it's been roasted in the oven and I put ginger and garlic in here as well. So it's just this really, really fabulous, well flavoured sauce that it is a cheap tomato sauce because I use canned tomatoes as well as a few fresh and you get the most incredible flavour and thickness. Look at that. Absolutely wonderful. So I'm going to be adding into here 100 grams which is 3.5 ounces of tomatoes, tomato sauce, sugar-free tomato sauce if you can find it. Um, but just make sure it's sugar-free because there's sugar in everything these days in the supermarket. And it's up to us to be vigilant. So I've got a, oh my gosh, and the smell is so good. I'm going to add more. I'm going to add one more. So only because I like it. So you can add 100 to 100 and, I think it's about 130, 140 grams. <laughs> because it just smells so good. How could I not? Oh, wow. And you know what? This is the really cool part right now. I told you it wouldn't take long to create this. And we're kind of done. It's ready to go. So I'm going to turn this off so it can stop making noise. Oh, much better. 
Oh, the silence, I love it. And um, can we just show you what we have there? So that was less than 10 minutes. Remember the first bake on the chips required for you know, 14 to 15. So you could, if you've chopped everything up in advance, you could actually pull this off while they're doing their first bake, which is very, very exciting. So I'm gonna have a bit of a taste. This tasting is always really important too, of course. We've gotta taste it. Oh, it's pretty good. Oh, there's a bit of heat in there. <laughs> more but it's nice it's like look it does need I'm not gonna lie it needs a bit of salt it does need a bit of salt and that's why tasting is so important you know it's the, the major difference between a chef a professional chef and someone who cooks at home is that you know well, hopefully the professional chef doesn't send anything out of their kitchen without tasting it first and how often you know does this happen at, at home that people get into that really good habit of going through Tasting as you go, evaluating what you've created to decide whether you're happy and content. Not just feeding it to yourself, but feeding it to someone you love or maybe it's someone you don't love. <laughs> Hopefully it's someone you love. Um, it's really good. It's really, you know, I would put another spoon of that tomato sauce in there, but no, I need to save it for something else. But you can see this finished touch, right? It's just wonderful absolutely wonderful and the the reason i really like the vegetables that i've chosen is they've stayed intact so the, the celery's still got a bite to it you know the capsicum was, you could almost think it's raw because it's only been in there for a few seconds and we really do have a really nice nacho beef style you know i don't know is it a stew is, i don't know what it is let's just call it nacho beef that's what we call it all right let's plate up so come back come back to me over here all right here we go Cleaning up is one of my most enjoyable things to do because all your hard work is now to be displayed for all to see and it's very, very exciting. So grab yourself up a plate, <laughs> ideally. I'm going to start with the nacho mince or beef going down. This is like two, real, this is a really big portion. I'm not sure how who I'm making this for. <laughs> There's a lot once you add all those vegetables, isn't it? You can probably get three of this. Look at that. That's fantastic. All right. So, big pile of the beef goes down. First and foremost. Let's let that cool over there. The next thing that we're going to think about is I'm going to make a very quick salsa for you. I told you it was three recipes, right? And that salsa is so simple. I've got a tomato that I've just diced up. There's a bit of red onion that I've diced up as well. I'm going to be adding in a bit of salt. I'm going to be adding in a little bit of pepper. You could add in a little bit of chili if you really wanted to at this point in time. You could add a bit of chili. I'm also going to be adding some fresh lime juice there. So give that a little bit of a roll on the bench. It's going to help to extract any of the juice or as much of the juice as possible because sometimes your limes can be quite dry. They really can. So you want to you want to get as much out of it as possible. Give it a good squeeze, just like that. We're gonna also, oh my gosh, add just a few of some few a few fresh herbs. And this is how I store my herbs. So this is a damp, not wet, but damp tea towel. And yeah, here are all my beautiful herbs. I've got parsley in here. There's sage. There's some fennel tops. I've got mint and I've got coriander. So I reckon I'm going to do some mint because mint is amazing. I am going to do some coriander. You don't have to if you don't like coriander. I like it. I like it a lot. So I reckon that is going to be me. Oh, the smell again. And this is how if you store your herbs in a damp tea towel in the you know veggie crisper of your fridge on the bottom, it helps them to last like six or seven times longer than what you would expect them to last if you just store them in the fridge. So nice little tip there for you guys. All right, so just give them a quick chop. I've got quite a bit here because I'm going to add some to my salsa. I'm going to use some to go as a bit of a sprinkle over, over top of our, our nacho beef as well. Nice little fine, fine dice or fine slice. Let's mix about a tablespoon of that through. As I was saying, I'm also just going to add a bit to the top of, um, of the wonderful nacho beef, which you can't see, but I am, trust me, I am doing it. A little bit of that goes on there. Grab 
stuff. And one of the things about salsa is it's best served freshly made. So this is one of those dishes that, that does not benefit from sitting around. You know, you want everything to be as fresh as possible. You want you don't want to add the acid too soon because it'll begin to break down the tomato and the onion too much. Because I mean, just even like that, that is just so looks. It's looking so delicious, so incredibly delicious. I want to eat it just like that. So of course you could add chili here, as we were saying. But really, there is apart from that, there's not really much more that you need when it comes to a salsa, except of course to have a little taste. Mmm, yummy. Oh, it's so fresh. And that's basically what a salsa is. Fresh. Something fresh. Something light. Something that kind of gets the taste buds, you know, working. And that is exactly what happened there. It just kind of went, Whoop! I mean, I might add, no way. That's really got chili in it. Oh, my. All right, I won't do that. No, 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 no. That's not a good idea. All right. So I like to add a little bit of salsa to right to the top of the beef. But I keep a bit back. Because then we go to our chips. Let's not forget our big pile of chippies go on there. Oh, yes. I know Coco's really excited. She's been eyeing up these chips all day. In fact, I had to say to her, I've counted them. So that she wouldn't eat them. Because she was convinced it belonged to her. <laughs> like, that's mine. I was like, you're waiting for me to do the class first. So chips go on there. And then I like to also finish it off. There's a little bit, I've just got like a tablespoon of coconut yogurt in there. I'm just going to add that little last bit of lime juice because I don't want to waste it. Pinch of salt. Black pepper. We just made like a little, you know, uh, lime scented coconut yogurt. How good is that? And once again, we're going to pop that on the side. And because, let's finish it off. Let's go the whole hog. I want this to be something that if you got served it in a restaurant, you would be really happy. And you know how we do that? We're just going to finish it off, be a bit fancy. We'll just add a few leaves. Remember, when a restaurant adds a few leaves, they add about $10. <laughs> so you can say, no garnish, please. <laughs> I might say, no, I'm joking. They don't. Restaurants, we just like to put color and, you know, complete things. That's what we're trying to do. And I reckon, just looking at that, we have game set and match with our amazing look at that whoa 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 look at that beef nacho beef with that wonderful put a bit more bridge salsa on there whoa. on top we have that little lime scented coconut yogurt and of course the most amazing crispy chips that that gives you the ability to do that yeah bit of yogurt that's what you get to do mm. <laughs> Oh my god. I need a moment. Fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. You would not think that this is healthy. You just think you're eating like a really decent plate of Mexican flavours. That's what you think you're eating. And you basically are. But we've taken out the gluten, we've taken out the wheat, we've taken out the grain, we've taken out the dairy, and of course we've taken out the sugar as well. And you're left with that. So, if you would like this recipe, you're going to have to wait till Friday. <laughs> but I know some smart people like, uh, I think it was Wendy, wrote it down, is writing it down. So there you go, folks. I hope you've enjoyed tonight. I have enjoyed it as well. See you this time, back this time next week, same time in the kitchen. We're going to be cooking something else delicious for you guys next Tuesday at 6.30. I look forward to seeing you. Until then, be well, be safe. And eat even better. We'll see you later.